The last uh, section in topic one for additional chemistry um, is just for higher tier only. So those of you who are uh, definitely in foundation, this will not come up on your, your exam, although it is still um, useful to know. Okay, so the last section in this topic is all about isotopes. Okay, and uh, what this means, what it is referring to, okay, the easiest way to actually kind of have a bit of an introduction to it is to look at your periodic table. Now, we have already said what our two numbers mean. Okay, we said that the, the smaller number, the atomic number, is the number of protons and therefore also the number of electrons in our atom. We said that the mass number, the massive number, the larger one, is the number of protons plus neutrons. But take a look at copper and take a look at chlorine on your periodic tables. You will notice that their mass number is not a whole number. Okay, so copper is 63.5, chlorine is 35.5. What on earth is going on? Okay, so we need to look at this in a bit more detail. Okay, so I'm going to write out chlorine st structure here, okay, which is 35.517 Cl. Okay, so clearly chlorine has got 17 protons. That's fine, that's not up for negotiation. Chlorine does have 17 protons and 17 electrons. But what is going on here? 35.5, does chlorine have half a neutron? Well, no, it doesn't. Okay, what is actually going on is there are two possible forms of chlorine. Okay, this stems from the fact that um, every element's uh, reactivity and their properties is determined by this this atomic or proton number. Actually, the neutrons don't really affect the properties of the um, element that much. They just affect the mass of um, the atoms. You can actually have different forms or different um, atoms of the same element. So in chlorine's case, we actually have two possible forms. The first one would actually be 35, 17 Cl, okay? So this is an atom with um, 17 protons, 17 electrons, and 18 neutrons. Okay, so let's put above that 18 neutrons. Okay, so remember that comes from 35 minus 17. The second isotope we can have, or the second different atomic form of the same um, um, element is actually 37, 17 Cl. Okay, so this one has got 37 minus 17 is 20 neutrons. So just a quick recap, isotopes are different atomic forms of the same elements the same number of protons and electrons, but different numbers of neutrons. So literally the only difference between these two atoms is that they weigh a, they weigh a slightly um, different amount. They've got different numbers of neutrons. Okay, but then surely our, what we call relative atomic mass, this number here must just be an average of 35 and 37, right? It should be 36. Well, no, not quite, okay? We actually need to know what this number here means Okay. Now, this one is a bit of a mouthful. Okay, It has come up on a GCC paper before, and they did actually want the AS level definition of this. So I have written this down, because it's going to take too long to write out. Um, I would highly recommend pausing this video, writing it out yourself, Okay, taking a few minutes to try and remember it, covering it up and trying to write it out. If you can remember this word for word, you're going to get full marks if that question comes up, define the term relative atomic mass. Okay. Um, so if do do that, please, and it will help you out. It does come up at AS, AS level again. Okay, so those of you who are moving on to do AS level chemistry, it will it is the same definition there. Um, relative atomic mass. Okay, and our definition is this. Okay, relative atomic mass is the weighted mean average mass of the naturally occurring isotopes of an element compared to one twelfth the mass of carbon 12. Okay, so a pretty big mouthful to be honest with you. Okay, so what this actually means is we don't just take the average of these isotopes because clearly the average of these two, 35 and 37, would be 36. Okay, we have to take a weighted average. What this means is we take into account of how much of each one there is. So if you look back to here, 35.5, the weighted part means we must have more of this 35, 17 CL 
then we do the 37 of 17 CL. Okay, so that's where the weighted part comes in. The mean average, um, just, you know, your, your mean in maths, you add them up, divide by the number you've got, but it has to be a weighted version. Okay, this part here, compared to 1 12th the mass of carbon 12, um, this really is the AS definition. We take all of the um, atomic numbers, um, all, we always compare them to carbon 12, just because that was um, one of the most uh, kind of commonly understood and known about elements. It gives us a good reference point. Okay, don't worry too much about this. If you, um, there, is a, there has been a mark on the exam for saying compared to 1 12th the mass of carbon 12, so do remember that. Um, but the key part really is the weighted mean average mass of the isotopes of an element. Okay, so write that down, cover it up, try and write it out from memory until you've learned that. Okay, that is our definition of relative atomic mass. So, uh, what we've said so far then, we have got different isotopes, different atomic forms of chlorine. We've got 3517Cl and 3717Cl with different numbers of neutrons. Okay. You may well be asked to do calculations on these, okay? I'm gonna go through the first one uh, with you um, using this example here, okay? And I know, just because I've done this several times and also looking at this, I know we've got a lot more of 3517Cl than do 3717Cl. In fact, I know that we have got 75% 3517Cl and we've got 25% 3717Cl, okay? What this means is that if you had a big bucket of chlorine, okay, with 100 atoms of chlorine in there, in a natural sample, 75% of those atoms would be of this um, form of chlorine. Okay, so 75% out of every 100, well, 75 out of every 100 atoms would be 3517Cl. 25% would naturally, just naturally occurring, be this one. Okay, so that's what this means. To work out the relative atomic mass from these numbers, you need to take these abundances, okay, and work out the total mass um, of the atoms um, with that particular mass. So in this case here, RAM, the relative atomic mass, okay, first off, let's do it for 100 atoms. Okay, so we're going to work out the total mass of 100 atoms of chlorine, 75 out of that 100 would have a mass of 35. Okay, so that's 75 um, atoms with a mass of 35. Okay, we also have 25 out of 100 atoms with a mass of 37. Okay, that there is the total mass of 100 natural atoms of chlorine. Okay, which is brilliant, but we want the, um, the average mass of one atom. Okay, we are therefore going to divide this number by 100. Okay, and I'm not going to work this out now, okay, but if this does not equal 35.5, I will eat my hat. Okay. okay, just to really reinforce and practice this, we're going to go through a couple of examples um, that you could get asked in your exam. Um, and the best way for you to go away and practice these is to Google um, relative atomic mass or isotope calculations. I'll put some links up, you should be able to find some um, online to practice that. Okay, so in this particular question, we are told that there are two isotopes of boron, okay? Naturally, there is 20% of boron 10, okay? And there is 80%, 80% of boron 11. And we are asked to calculate the relative atomic mass of this sample of boron. Okay, so just like before, imagine you are working out the total mass of 100 atoms of boron. Okay, so these 20 atoms with a mass of 10, we work out the total mass of them by doing 20 times 10. Okay, we then need to add the total mass of these 80% with a mass of 11. Okay, so plus 80 times 11, okay, and that will give us the total mass of 100 atoms. We then need to divide that by 100, and that should give us the relative atomic mass of boron. Okay, so 20 times 10 is 200. 80 times 11 is 880. 
Okay, divide by 100. So that is going to be 1080 divided by 100, which gives us a final answer of 10.8. Okay, whenever you do these, it is very, very logical and wise to look back at the question you started with. Does my answer make sense? 10.8 here, okay, that's, well, four fifths of the way between 10 and 11. If you look at your question, you are told that you have got four, you've got 80% of four fifths of this 11B and only one fifth or 20% of 10B. Therefore, this answer makes sense. Always try and link it back to what you start with, okay? And you can basically self mark your answer. That to me makes sense. Okay, so I'm gonna put one question up for you to um, have a go at. This is actually an AS level chemistry um, question. It's exactly the same idea though. The numbers are just a little bit more awkward than the examples we've seen. Okay, I will put um, kind of a um, um, guidelines up if you like underneath. So give this one a go, see if you get an answer. And remember, you're expecting it to be somewhere near 32, right? You've got much more of the 32 isotope than of the 33 or 34. So give that a go and mark your answer underneath.